Hello, welcome to The Collision. I'm Daniel Blackaby. They say that in space no one can hear you scream, but that is certainly not a problem in the movie theater, where Alien has been making audiences terrified for years. Back in theater for one week to celebrate the 40th anniversary, I had the chance to go revisit one of my favorite films. I'm excited to talk about it. As I said, this is, this is one of my favorite films of all time. So this is not the first time that I've seen the film. Uh, the fact that it came out in theaters eight years before I was born uh, meant that this was my first time to see it on the big screen, to experience it with a room full of other, other uh, terrified audience members. H having been out for 40 years, the, the, the basic premise of the story, or at least the kind of the visualized, the iconic alien, uh, maybe some of the scenes are probably familiar with a lot of you, um, it sort of kind of infiltrated the pop culture consciousness, whether you've seen the film or not. Uh, in, in one way, it, the, the film can be perhaps best described as its, its jaws in space. And if you followed the collision for very long, you know that I mean that in the highest possible compliment. Uh, the movie Jaws by Steven Spielberg is my all-time favorite film, uh, a movie that I unapologetically argue is the greatest movie ever made. And Alien in a lot of ways succeeds for the same reasons that Jaws succeeded with. The basic plot of the story is you have, you have a, a cargo, kind of a commercial cargo ship. They're, they're towing some, some of their cargo back in space. They, they hear a distress call, um, kind of a beacon. They go to investigate it. Uh, one thing leads to another and you have a, a cargo ship, a crew of seven people, and there's an alien on board. The, the, the plot, kind of beautiful in its simplicity is is this the story of these seven crew members, none of them with a military background, uh, just sort of regular workers on a ship with this alien uh, and trying to survive, trying to figure out how do we get this off our ship? How do we get off the ship? How do we make it back to Earth uh, when there's this creature kind of lurking in the shadows of this dark ship? Another, another thing that Alien does so well, which, which really kind of started with, with Jaws, is that the alien itself, despite being so iconic in the film, you know, most of us probably know what the alien looks like, whether we've seen it or not. It's actually, the, the alien itself is very, is used very sparingly in the movie. Uh, when you add it up, the, the, the xenomorph alien, as it's called, it's actually only on screen for four minutes in the entire film. And it doesn't even make its first kind of on screen appearance until about an hour into the film. And I think the decision to, to kind of hold the creature in the background, not just kind of throw it up front, um, kind of, it really amplifies the terror of this movie. This isn't a movie that, you know, that just is sort of kind of a bloodbath featuring this alien kind of going from crew member to crew member killing people. The, the, the success of this film, what makes it so terrifying is that you, you, you never really see the alien, but you can always feel its presence it's sort of lurking in the ship. The crew members, you know, even when it's not on screen, you definitely feel that the alien is out there somewhere. Um, kind of this, the, the suspense in this movie, rather than just sort of kind of leaning into the gore and the violence aspect, this, the terror and the suspense of the unknown is this unrelenting in this film. There's, once this film gets started, about, you know, about the 10 minute mark of the film, this, the suspense and the tension that it manages to maintain is this unrelenting. There's, there's really no, no moment in the film just for the audience just to relax or to breathe. Uh, you know, watching it in the theater for the first time really kind of brought this home to me is this, is this silence. No one's breathing, no one's moving, no one's kind of coughing. It's just, you're holding your breath, just waiting for this creature to reappear um, and kind of never really feeling comfortable knowing when it's going to come back. And like I said, the film, probably the, the most iconic moment in the whole film is sort of the, the infamous the scene where the, the alien bursts out of the chest. Uh, you know, it's it's being spoofed. It's being one of the kind of claimed or acclaimed as one of the kind of the most iconic scenes in cinematic history and in some ways th that scene kind of paints a an unfair light on this film that that scene which is graphically and shockingly violent in, in its own right kind of makes makes a lot of people assume that this is this sort of a bloody violent movie um which really isn't the case that that one scene is actually again this movie's been out for 40 years so some minor spoilers for the film but the that one scene is is really the only on-screen death um, that you explicitly see in the entire film. This isn't a film that's just sort of like a, a hacker slasher movie with an alien. You actually, you, you very rarely see sort of the, the carnage or the, 
kind of the violence happen on screen, it's always kind of left to the side. It always cuts away right before, right before the violence happens. And what's implied is shocking and um, and terrifying. Uh, but but as far as this kind of gratuitous on screen, there's actually very little blood or gore in this entire film outside of that. Um, that one scene, and one of the one of the lines that Ridley Scott, the director, when he was asked about the film, one of the lines that I think um, you can kind of point to a lot of the success of this and of the film as a whole as he says, what's most terrifying to, to audiences is not really what you see on the screen; it's what you think you saw. It's what your mind, your imagination, can often kind of conjure up more terrifying images and ideas than just showing showing it explicitly on the screen. And I think that's where this film, as opposed to a lot of kind of modern day horror movies that they kind of glorify in this showing the carnage and the blood and trying to gross out viewers um, and kind of at a kind of stooping down to that level. This film never goes there. Uh, and one of the reasons why I find this film kind of an inspiring film is that in some of the more modern day kind of hacker slasher movies, you almost find yourself cheering for the for the villain. You you're, you're sort of there just to kind of revel in the almost cathartic violence. You want to sort of see what new ways can can the director come up with to, to kind of off these paper-thin characters. Oh, that's not the case in Alien. Every one of the characters of the seven crew members is a sympathetic character. You you kind of you relate to them, and you find yourself cheering for them to survive. You don't want to see the violence happen. You don't want kind of bad things to happen to these characters, uh, which makes when that when those moments do happen, it makes it all the more powerful. And one last thing before we kind of talk about one of the main themes in this story or in this movie is I, I should note as far as this from a Christian perspective, you know, although the violence is not really on screen, it's hor- it is terrifying, uh, it's suspenseful, but it's not gratuitously violent. Um, probably the only other scene I think that audiences, Christian audiences should know going in is there is there is a moment near the end of the film uh, kind of that has some sexuality in it. It's, there's no nudity, uh, but you know the protagonist, uh, Ripley, the iconic character is shown kind of getting ready to go into her space sleep and she's in her underwear her bottoms and a white shirt and although it's it's not showing anything maybe that you wouldn't see at a at a beach or somewhere it is it is somewhat revealing um, and it's just something to keep in mind watching it as a male as a christian uh, going into this movie but as far as far as the themes of this, kind of the one theme i think that and it's expressed in several different ways but it's just the theme of fear um, this whole movie just plays on that one emotion of fear um, kind of the fear in the characters, the fear that it instills in the audience, um, sort of this, this lurking, this looming dread. And you can kind of see it in, in two different ways. In some ways, the film's almost, although not like an allegory or a metaphor, um, this kind of, it does sort of put in some powerful imagery to this idea of, of facing your fear. Uh, it's almost in a symbolic sense, you know, you have the alien, you know, the iconic scene or the, the alien comes comes out of the chest. You have this this kind of this embodiment of fear kind of coming from within us um, and then kind of lurking and haunting us and this 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 kind of battle to face our fear uh, to confront this fear that has been birthed into the world through us until at the end of the film trying to kind of banish this this fear this dread out into space and I think it's it's a powerful you know it doesn't work in a clear kind of allegorical sense but it is there is some powerful symbolism I think and just you know Facing our fears, uh, confronting these fears that are that are haunting us, and I think th- there is also a danger, however, of I think sometimes, especially uh, especially when we're kind of analyzing a movie from a more critical sense, of trying to over intellectualize and, and kind of reduce every movie to some kind of what does this teach us? What, what's the message of this film? And I think films can do that, and films do have powerful messages. But I think it's also important to to kind of keep in mind that not all movies have to do that to have value. I think Alien isn't necessarily a movie that is trying to teach us any powerful lessons. It's not trying to kind of give us a step-by-step model on how to face our fear, even though there is that element. Uh, but what it does do is it, just, it kind of it presents us an opportunity just to, to feel that emotion of fear. And I think a lot of us, we, we live such safe lives today uh, that I think there's a lot of value. And, and it's, it's healthy just to for two hours just to experience fear, just to experience terror, obviously in a, in a safe kind of way. Uh, but just to get in touch with this kind of crucial and important human emotion, I think there's value in that, that that's different than any kind of intellectual message or moral that it might be trying to teach us. Well, in the end, I think, as I said, this is, this is kind of unapologetically one of my, one of my all-time favorite films. Uh, you know, I've, I've, been, I've probably seen it four or five times now, 
and now finally on the big screen. Uh, it, it is, you know, it, it is a it is a terrifying movie. It is there's violence. It's it, it can I know I understand it can be a lot for some viewers to take in. My my wife kind of graciously declined coming to see this movie in theaters with me. Uh, it's not really her thing. And I know that this isn't a film that I think all Christians need to watch. Uh, you'll have to decide on your own. Uh, but I do think that this this film really stands the test of time. And having seen it uh, in on theaters, other than a few maybe of the special effects uh, kind of in the background, if you didn't know that this film wasn't, you know, that was made 40 years ago, you'd have no idea that this this was a, an, an old film. The movie, it stands up. Uh, it's just a classic case of this classic storytelling. Uh, it's, it's kind of masterfully made. And it's it's kind of a throwback uh, to an older kind of era of filmmaking uh, when it's not trying to kind of just gross out or be violent, but it can just sort of play on your own human emotions and kind of leave more, kind of leave more, raise more questions than giving answers. Uh, Ridley Scott, he, he really holds us back in telling this story. And there's a lot of the mysteries of the world, a lot of the, the imagery is never explained. And eventually the sequels kind of undo this, unfortunately. Uh, but so much of it is just left to the imagination. It's, it's, it's simplistic in its storytelling, but it's, but it's so powerful and remains uh, one of my favorite films of all time. But what about you? Have you have you seen it? You've had 40 years to, to see it. So I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you have seen this. Uh, but what do you think of it? I'd love to, this is one of my favorite films. I, I'm glad to finally have the chance to talk about it. Uh, so if, you, if you've seen this film, either as it returned to theaters or just oh, sometime in the last couple of years, I'd love to talk about it with you and see how, what you thought, uh, see if you agree with me or not. Uh, but let's talk about that. And if you haven't done so yet, uh, we'd love for you to subscribe to this channel to keep up with all of our video content. I want to thank you for watching. I hope that you'll continue to collide with your world for Christ.